Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's me, Ian Douglas, the storyteller. And uh, if any of you have ever been down to Eureka in Halifax before, you might recognise me as the man that tells stories. Usually in my pedal-powered bow-top caravan called Vera. But unfortunately, Vera and I are parted because she's stuck in a lay-by in the north of the country. And here am I, down in the Midlands, and it'll be a little while before we're brought together again. But fear not, Vera's safe. But I did think I would show you this. If I can just turn the camera, I can show you. Can you see? This is a boat. In fact, it's a boat called Hawker. And Hawker is where I live. So that's a very special place. And I live there with my wife, Jo. So I thought I'd puddle across to the other side of the canal, uh, to a field under this beautiful tree here that's just coming into bloom, and, uh, and tell you a little story to keep you company. As I know you're all stuck at home at the moment, probably with very little to do. And I sat and scratched my head this morning about the right kind of story to tell you. And I thought I would tell you a story all about a word, and that word is wit. Now don't you go worrying if you don't know what the word wit means, because I'm going to tell you, you see. Wit's an old word, and we don't use it so much, but it is a grand word, and it means, well it kind of means your thoughts and your ideas, the things that rummage around inside your head, and I know enough of you well enough to know that you have great thoughts and ideas. And you can turn your wit in lots of different directions. You see, some people are wise wits. Some people are clever wits. Some people are wicked wits. And this story is all about such a person, a very wicked wit. And the story goes a little like this. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a village. Now, in that village, there was born two boys. Now, those boys, from the moment they were born, they were just destined to be friends. And they spent every waking moment together as they grew. And as they grew, their friendship got stronger and stronger and stronger. Until eventually, they became adults, they became men. And as they became adult, adults, well, as they became men, they pondered as to what job they'd like to do. And they decided that they both liked to do the same job. They both like to be farmers. Well, once they decided that, they decided then that they needed to work out where to put their farms. And not wanting to be parted, they found the most appropriate place. Because there was, just at the edge of the village, two hills and the two hills were joined by land that went down into a valley. In fact the only thing that separated the land was a, a path that came out of the village down through their fields and up into the hills. Well they were mighty pleased with this you see because the windows in the kitchens of those farmhouses faced each other. And they knew that every morning they could come downstairs from their beds. They could stand at the kitchen window. They could make themselves a nice cup of tea. And they could wave at each other across the valley. And if they did that, each day would be grand. The problem was, living in the village near the two farms was a man who had very wicked in fact, he didn't like anybody who had things that he didn't possess. And the thing he hated most was friendship. Well, he knew about the two boys, you see. And he knew how close they were, how close their friendship was. And he decided he was going to break up their friendship. Now, now, that's not very nice, is it? Well, he sat, you see, and he pondered as to how he would break up the two friends. And he devised a very wicked 
plan. See what you think of this. He went into the village. And in the village, at the time of this story, there was a tailor's shop. Now, don't you worry if you don't know what a tailor's shop is. Well, I will tell you, you see. If you want to get yourself a fine waistcoat made just like mine, you see, you go and see a tailor. And a tailor will sew you that piece of clothing. Well, the wicked wit, he went to the tailor's shop. And he asked the tailor to make him a fine new tailcoat. But it was indeed the most unusual tailcoat you could imagine. One half of the tailcoat was bright red, as red as a strawberry. The other half of the tailcoat was bright blue, as blue as the midday sky. Can you imagine? Well, when it was fitted and he was happy, the wicked wit waited for the perfect opportunity. He waited for sunrise, for he knew that the two friends would just be coming out their houses with their cup of tea to wave at each other. And that's when he played out the plan. The two friends, they stood at their kitchen window they waved at each other, they poured out their cup of tea and then they came out of the farmhouse doors to see what the day would bring. And it's then that they looked up the valley towards the town and saw the wicked wit. didn't their mouths open wide in astonishment at the fine coat he was wearing. And as he passed, one friend called to the other, did you see that fine fellow just walked down the path that divides our land? I did, said the other, and wasn't he wearing the finest tail coat you've ever seen? He was, said his friend, and wasn't it the finest red cloth you've ever seen? as red as a strawberry. Red, said his friend. That coat wasn't red, it was blue. As bright blue as the midday sky. Blue, he said. Nay, it was red. Red, he said. Nay, it was blue. Well, if you say it was blue, said the other, then you are a fool. A fool? How dare you call me a fool? Who's more the fool? The fool or the fool that calls his friend a fool? And be too, before too long, the two friends, they started to fight. First with words, but then with fists. And that, my friends, is the worst kind of fight you can have. Well, the sound from their fight grew so, so big uh, that it travelled to the ears of their wives. And their wives, well, they came out to see what was happening. Well... I can tell you that the two wives, well, they weren't wicked wits. They were wise wits. And they saw what had happened. Because they looked down the valley. And they could see that at the end of the valley was the wicked wit who had turned in his tail coat and was now stood laughing at the two friends fighting. Well, the wives stopped their husbands. And their husbands, they crossed their arms and they turned their backs and refused to speak again. And so the wives, they chased the wicked wit. And when they arrived there, they gave them a few of their wise words. In fact, those words were so sharp, it turned the wicked wit in circles until eventually his tailcoat spun. And as he spun, he travelled back up the path between the land and back to the village, through the village and up into the hills, and was never seen again. But as he turned, the two friends turned and saw what had happened and saw the folly and error of their argument. And you know, 
those two friends in that moment, well, they were more than friends. They were wise wits themselves. And they never fell foul of a wicked wit ever again. And that, dear friends, is the end of my little story. And I do hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope in these times when we're all locked up together, we can remain friends and not allow wicked wits to rip our friendships asunder. And so I shall bid you adieu, I shall bid you goodbye, and I'm sure I'll see you all again somewhere along the way. My name's Ian, the storyteller. I hope you've enjoyed the story of the wicked wit, and I'm sure there'll be more stories to follow soon. So from me and Hawker and the canal side and the bough of this lovely tree. I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta. Goodbye.